Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And it is a, a sad day, really, for our society. The society, of course, that we share. Junior doctors, reluctantly, but in their droves, have withdrawn their labour from the NHS today in protest at a contract being inflicted, they would say, upon them by the Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt. I will do my best to represent the government's position in the course of what follows, because the government doesn't feel that you are important enough to have anybody explaining to you from their perspective precisely what their position is. They will rely upon their usual suspects and friends in the broadcast and print media to trot out the sound bites, the phrases, the fraudulent and false statistics in the hope that you will just go, oh, greedy, they must be wrong. And you're perfectly entitled to do that. That's the nature of a liberal democracy. Seriously, if you're not interested in, in facts and truth, you should probably find something else to listen to. If you, if you don't want your lazy acceptance of any industrial action being motivated by leftist agitation, then this is probably not the show for you today. If you're desperate to cling on to your utterly bogus belief that doctors must somehow be doing something other than sticking up for you, then you probably need to find a bucket of sand to stick your head in. Because I'm interested today in why why doctors are doing what they're doing and whether or not we should be supporting them. I fully understand people who aren't and I appreciate the country in many ways is driven by them. You don't really have to rely on me to explain why newspapers owned by tax avoiding billionaires hate the idea of doctors because the very front of the queue to buy the NHS when it's being carved up by this government will be tax avoiding billionaires who own large swathes of the British media. So when they send out their instructions of a morning to use words like greed or Corbynite or Mark or infiltration, then they know what they're doing. And they are taking a bet, with much evidence to believe that their bet will prove to be winning, that you and I will be stupid enough to swallow the poison that they are serving up. If you do accidentally ingest any poison today, I should reassure you also that A&Es are operating on a normal level. We'll find out precisely what the situation is in Sandwell, in West Bromwich at the moment. A level four incident um, has seen the local trust tell junior doctors that they must attend work. We'll find out from junior doctors after the quarter past ten travel news exactly what that means. But here's how it worked. Okay, we, we have a little habit on this program of speaking to people in the heart of the story rather than those with a vested political interest operating on the fringes of it. And that's why, for a couple of times now, when the last strike was mooted at the end of last year and when the current strike, which started this morning, was first um, uh, decided upon, we thought we'd confine calls to doctors, to junior doctors, making it absolutely clear, to the point, actually, of probably boring you blind, uh, that I really, really wanted to speak to junior doctors that were opposed to the strike. We're, we're, we're yet to find one. I'm sure there are some healthcare professionals who are opposed to the strike, but it would be odd, wouldn't it, for them uh, to be in large number and yet utterly absent from the debate. I've said to you a million times, a million times in the past, if you support every strike that ever happens, then you're, you're daft. But I think it's fair to say that if you're daft for supporting every strike that ever happens, you're similarly daft for opposing every strike that ever happens. This isn't about left versus right today, Joe points out in the first tweet of the morning. This is about top versus bottom. This, this dispute is about whether or not you are going to allow doctors, medical professionals, the people with whom we entrust our children's lives from the, well, it's not even from the cradle to the grave, it's from conception to the grave. These are the people to whom we entrust pretty much everything. Are you going to trust them when they tell you that what's being done to them is not just bad for them, but more pertinently, bad for you? I think I've probably made my feelings a little clear on this issue. This is not necessarily a morning for balance, because if you want balance, you have to accept that the government's case is as powerful as the doctor's. And if the government's case is as powerful as the doctor's, could you just take a moment out of your morning to tell me why the hell they don't think you're important enough to hear from the government on this issue? What are they striking about? They're striking about a new contract, which Jeremy Hunt, a man who um, used to be the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport, and uh, whose relationship with Rupert Murdoch was, well, not as quite close as Jerry Hall's, but certainly moved into an area of control. So there were allegations that he was perhaps too close to them, too keen to do their bidding. The phone hacking scandal, of course, did for that. But the problem becomes pretty much this. 
if you're not entirely clear on what the strike is about, you're left with a choice, a binary choice, about trust. The question becomes, who do you trust? I don't want you to be left with that binary choice this morning. Who do you trust? Because you, you base trust, really, as much upon facts as you do upon heritage. So while doctors historically are among the most trusted and trustworthy members of our society, that shouldn't give them a, a, a free pass. That shouldn't give them a blank slate to, or an expectation that we will believe them, whatever they tell us. Whatever they tell us. On this occasion, you have to wonder why so many red herrings have been thrown into the mix, don't you? You have to wonder why. Talk about weekend morbidity rates, which has been spouted by government spokespeople and subsequently disproved. Why does the disproving merit a paragraph in the back of a newspaper when the original false claim merits a front page? Seriously, if you hate me and you hate my politics, that's fine. But you need to answer these questions if you don't want to be a lemming. Again, I completely respect your right to be a lemming. I completely respect your right to be a lemming. You want to march over a cliff, that's absolutely fine. But you need to answer these questions. Why would the apology for the facts and the figures being wrong be hidden away in the back of a newspaper when the original false claim was bang on the front? It's a good enough question for me to start off this morning's proceedings. And why, when it comes to a 98% turnout, how could anybody, a 98% turnout, Oh, I beg your pardon, 76% turnout, a 98% vote for this action. If you thought that some doctors were dodgy, if you thought that some doctors were swinging the lead or greedy, two incomes, by the way, of junior doctors would still not be in the top bracket of people who would qualify for government help in getting social housing at the moment, getting shared ownership housing. God, how the world has changed in my lifetime. Two doctors, two junior doctors. These can be people with 10 years on the clock. In fact, that's the first thing we'll do when my panel arrives find out exactly what a junior doctor is, because we're confused about everything. And, and I, I'm not one for talking about... I now know why you use the phrase mainstream media. I worked it out over Christmas. It's just the opposite of social media, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the opposite of um, uh, the, the, the websites where the public can actually have a say. The mainstream media, uh, the newspapers, some broadcasters, that's where, if you like, the, the agenda is set from without... Uh, on social media, it's set from within. I don't know that one's necessarily better or worse than the other. But it's very interesting on this, because the mainstream media has let the nation down on an epic level. On an epic level. You have a strike which has seen doctors down stethoscopes and march out of hospitals, manning picket lines this morning, reluctantly, but with passion and belief. 98% of votes cast were in favour of this industrial action. And the public remains a little bit unclear on the wise and the wherefores of it. That's a huge failure. If you need, in the future, when historians of the future come to write about this era of our country's history, these will be the things they pick up on. You had a population which was pretty much kept in the dark by its own media about why 98% of votes cast in a ballot for junior doctors to go on strike were in favour of strike action. If 90... I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you that if 98% of them think it's necessary and required, the government's response... You remember this? No wonder they're not putting anyone out. The government's response was to say they're too thick to understand what's really going on. The British Medical Association is misleading them, manipulating them. The people you entrust with your children's lives are too stupid to understand exactly what is contained and what is on offer within this contract. If it was 40%, maybe, maybe you'd have a point. If there was division among the doctors, maybe you'd have a point. But this is as close to unanimity as you will see outside of North Korea. So at what point do you actually pause and think to yourself, God, it's all of them. And I'm choosing to believe Jeremy Hunt. It's almost every doctor on the, pla on the page, and I'm choosing to believe that Jeremy Hunt is right, and they are wrong. The only possible circumstances in which you would do that is if you've been denied access to the proper facts. 98% of people directly affected by something say that it's bad and wrong and needs to be resisted. The bloke determined to introduce it with a, shall we say, a track record that is less than sparkling, says that it's necessary and needs to be introduced and the doctors are all wrong. How could you pick one side over the other? I genuinely don't understand that. But I'm conscious of being a little bit guilty of things that I sometimes accuse some of my callers of. I, I, I could be trying a little bit too hard to see what I want to see. 98% though. 98%.
We'll get the panel in to the studio during the travel news. I want you to start ringing in. 0345 6060973 is the number you need. You're welcome to, to, to respond to the traditional questions. You don't need to ring in at all. I'll be happy to talk to the doctors for the duration. Um, but if you want to challenge anything they say, you can. If you want to ask them questions about what's going on, you can. The number you need will remain the same throughout the program. It's true, a fact, um, a couple of you are already expressing surprise at it, not challenging my observation, because the figure was 90,000. Two junior doctors, two doctors bringing in an income to the home will still be short of the threshold for help under this government's affordable housing proposals. That's absolutely astonishing. There's doctors now need help from the government. Two income, double income doctors' families need help from the government to, uh, to get on the housing ladder. And this is not a strike about pay. This 11% pay rise that Jeremy Hunt keeps talking about is just one of the things that we will expose, if you will, to perhaps a little more scrutiny than the government is comfortable with. And look, hey, I make no secret. I tell you the truth every day. I make no secret of where my feelings lie. If, you, if you've got a battle between a, a, a government and a workforce, between owners and workers, yeah, I do. My instincts lead me towards the workers. It makes me wrong sometimes, right sometimes. But as a general rule, as a general rule, siding with the workers, I don't think it's going to be a dangerous thing to do. You can show me the ghosts of the National Union of Mine Workers, the ghosts of uh, Red Robbo, the ghosts of the Dockers and the Steel Workers. Of course unions have done silly things in the past. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Of course pendulums have swung too far away from democratic mandates towards uh, power mongering and exertion of, of unfair uh, privilege. But just because one union makes a mistake doesn't mean that all unions are wrong. Just because one strike to you seems to stink doesn't mean that all strikes must therefore stink. And I'm not going all out yet, but honestly, hand on heart, are you going to let them do it to the doctors? It's up to you. It's up to us. Are we, are we going to let them do it to the doctors? I see how they managed to do it to teachers, firefighters. I think it's pretty easy to do it to tube workers, bus drivers. Anybody who ever actually resists the notion that you've got to do whatever your boss tells you in whatever circumstances, even if it's bad for you and bad for business, if your boss tells you to do it, you've got to do it. You've got no right of redress. You've got no right of reply. You know... Yesterday, we spoke about the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, describing the doctors as sort of crypto-communists, while at the same time hoping we've all forgotten all the promises he made. Bare-faced lies about firefighters. Bare-faced lies about ticket offices on the London Underground. Not even an apology for, well, not just backtracking on manifesto pledges, but tearing them up and setting fire to them while giggling at the idiocy and the credulity of the great British public. So they've done it to firefighters. They've done it to teachers. They've done it to, well, pretty much every sector of the public sector except the ones occupied by the middle classes. And now they're trying to do it to the doctors. Are you going to let them? Hit the numbers now. You will get through. I think that's more than enough from me. We shall be opening our first surgery after this. I'm joined in the studio by four people who phoned the programme yesterday when we tried to confine the conversation about the doctor's strike to hmm, doctors. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you invite on some right-wing newspaper columnists who know absolutely nothing about the issue? Why didn't you just read out the credola that Jeremy Hunt has been spouting since assuming office? Why didn't you just focus on Boris Johnson's column in the Daily Telegraph that said all junior doctors are crypto-communists who've been infiltrated by some form of Corbynite fifth column and don't know their proverbial backsides from their elbow. Or you could have just believed Jeremy Hunt when he said that the BMA have brainwashed some of the most highly educated young people in the country into not realising that a contract they've been offered is actually wonderful. Um, but we thought we'd talk to doctors because we're weird like that.